During the famine, we had to be creative to survive. We would pick and eat wild vegetables, grasshoppers, and even tree bark. One time, my younger brother and I went ten days without eating. When we were starving, my body getting hot, so I was looking for the coldest spot where I used to sleep on a concrete floor. All we had was cold water. After ten days, I didn't feel hungry anymore because I was numb. Dying from malnutrition was a constant threat. As you can see right now, my hair is really black. But when I was starving, my hair turned yellow. I was sick and weak all the time, and I had no energy. My family convinced me to eat everything I can find. On one occasion, my grandmother found six newborn mice under stones from our yard. She boiled these mice, and I ate them. I was five and a half years old. This is just my story. There are so many other stories like this. In fact, millions and millions of them. From 1990 to 1998. At least 2.5 million of North Koreans died by,、um, from starvation, diseases, and hypothermia, all caused by the policies of Kim dictatorship. In North Korea, nobody except the government can own the business. Who gets food? Decision made by the government. Why? Because the Soviet Union. They supported North Korean regime, food with the subsidies. When Soviet fell apart, the food subsidies stopped, and we starved. I was born in 1991 in North Hamgyong Province, into middle-class family. I had five siblings, three brothers and two sisters. My grandmother died in this great famine. My oldest sister, she left China for finding food. In 1998, she was only 17 years old, and after that, I have never heard from her since. Today, from my family, only my mother and my older sister are alive. I don't have a picture to share with you about all of my family members. Because it was really dangerous for us to carry a picture with us during our journey. All I have about my family is only memory. My family did everything they could to survive. But eventually, my my parents they ran out of ways to feed my family. One day, my father crossed the border into China to find food. After he came back, he、um, he got arrested by the police, and officials from our hometown came with wooden、uh, wooden blocks, and then they took my mother away after ruthlessly beating her. They also took away everything that my parents had purchased in China: food, clothing. Anything that they、uh, didn't look North Korean. My father was tortured severely by the police and was forced to admit to all the charges that they accused him of. They beat him with a club until it broke. He died from his wounds on a train while he was transferred to a prison. My father's death turned us into a outcast. Our neighbors wouldn't allow us to stay in our home. With nowhere to go, my mother decided to flee to China to save me and my older sister. The only reason I am here with you because my mother made that decision, and I am very thankful for her. 
It is very difficult for me to explain the sort of torture, intimidation, and um, suffer and pain uh, we suffered in the Chinese prison and North Korean prison. My mother's eardrum had burst, so she cannot hear on one side, and she's still suffering from the after effects from the prison and tortures. My mother and my older sister, the remaining sisters in He, were arrested four times in China and sent back to North Korea four times. And I sent、uh, back to North Korea twice. I believe the Chinese government is responsible for the inhumane treatment of North Koreans. During our ten years in China, we tried very hard to survive. Many people think that once we escape North Korea to China, our troubles are over. But Chinese, once we go to China, our life in China is not that easy. For more than half of my childhood, I lived in mortal fear. We hid in the mountains. We never stayed in one place more than one year. Because of our safety, we had to run from village to villages. Because if someone found out we came from North Korea, they will report to the police. Chinese plainclothes officers—they are specially trained to find North Koreans. We were caught many times from safe houses, on public transportation, and official buildings. After we being caught, we sent back to North prisons again. Even though for North Koreans, Chinese prison is huge and very fancy, but the conditions there are very bad. They give us very bad food, and they treat us really bad. They have no respect for human rights at all. In 2005. While in China, we were caught、uh, with a Korean American missionary, Pastor John Yun. We all were imprisoned in a Chinese jail for about 15 months. At the end of our sentences, Pastor Yun returned to the U.S. and my family sent back to North Korea. I thought that would be our end. We thought we will not survive anymore. But the miracle happened. After about a month later, Pastor Yun raised ten thousand dollars and、uh, paid to bribe a、uh, officers there, and、uh, helped us helped us to release in North Korea. After we were released, we swam across the Tuma River again, and we came to China, and we were hiding in China again. After about a year and a half. The UN、um, so、rescued my family, and they allowed us to enter the United States as legal refugees. I have been able to get my U.S. citizenship in 2013, and now I'm considered as Korean American. Once the factors are sent back to North Korea,、um, intelligence agents they sort out regular case defect, regular defector cases and、uh, serious defector cases. Irregular defector cases means that、uh, North Korean people they went to China、uh, and live in the villages only and without hearing any outside of information like news or anything or met foreign people. Serious defector cases fall into five categories. Number one, North Koreans who were exposed to outside information like TV news, radio, and newspaper. North Koreans who met foreigners like Americans and South Koreans. North Koreans who tried to go to South Korea, and North Koreans who helped other North Korean defectors in China, and North Korean people who became Christians. In the more serious cases, some、uh, North Korean people are sent to pol- political prison camps 
or sentenced to public execution. Today, we face daily challenges as we continue to adapt this new land. We try to focus on taking care of um, each other, and we're trying to study for better education and work hard for our uh, new resettlement. But what keeps me up at night is the thought of my father, my grandmother, my missing sister, and so many others who died needlessly in North Korea. The government decided it was better to punish us, to serve, uh, we, um, us to trying to survive, than to lose control over North Korean people. My mother decided to come to China, uh, to come to the United States instead of um, South Korea, because uh, she wanted to live far away from Korea as possible. I think she suffered too much in North Korea. That's why she made that decision. And this is why my sister Jin He and I started an organization called NK in USA. We help North Korean defectors like us want to escape and find freedom. Our work has three objectives. First, we rescue North Korean refugees from North Korea or China to the freedom country. Next, we are refugees ourselves too, so we want to uh, help other refugees who are trying to resettle in the United States. And lastly, we believe that education about North Korea is very important. So my sister and I uh, travel to give our testimony and let people know about the situation in North Korea. In close, as refugees, we will not rest until the suffering and the nightmare of um, everybody from North Korea is over in North Korea. Thank you very much.